You ever have an idea in your head that becomes all that you think about? Just eating at you day after day. Well, that's what this is. For years, I've watched other teams get deep dives and the Saints would rarely be featured. You ever seen that meme where Squidward was in the house looking down at Patrick and Spongebob outside running around? Well, kind of like that. So this series is going to be that. A space for us to get out there and run around. We almost didn't know the legend of the honey badger for multiple reasons. One, because there was a time where he stopped going by that nickname. And more importantly, because he had to overcome a ton of adversity on his way to the top. I asked Tyron about why he dropped the honey badger nickname. I mean, for me, because I think people didn't really, like they didn't really understand Tyron, you know what I mean? Um, and then I think the honey badger just kind of had like this, um, you know, like this head of steam that like, I, you know, I couldn't necessarily like stop if I wanted to. Um, but I just really wanted to kind of take a break. I didn't want people thinking that I was coming to the NFL because I wanted to be famous. You know, like I, I, I wanted them to know like, man, I, I just want to play football. Like, I don't care if you give me a nickname. I don't care if you don't call me anything. Um, I really just wanted that chance to kind of like let everybody know how serious I was about football. And I think when you have like monikers or you have like a brand off field, like coaches and, and management and, and people that's making decisions, they could kind of look at you and say, your focus may be on that. And I just didn't want to cloud anyone's judgment. But there's no longer any clouded judgment when it comes to who the Honey Badger is. Tyron eventually reclaimed the name and established himself as a legend as he pieced together a Hall of Fame career over the past 12 seasons on and off the field. But let's take a look at what it took to get there. This is The Legend of Rattel. It's December 3rd, 2011, and Les Miles' LSU Tigers just beat the Georgia Bulldogs in the SEC Championship game. Cornerback Tyron Matthew was named MVP after a 62-yard touchdown on a punt return set off an avalanche of points. But this wasn't Matthew's only time showing up big this season. The 5'9", 175 sophomore led the LSU Tigers in tackles and turnovers. Known for being David against the Goliaths of college football, also ranking second in the nation with five forced fumbles and six fumble recoveries, these stats put Tyron in rare air. He was a finalist for the Heisman Trophy, secured SEC Defensive Player of the Year, along with the Chuck Badnarik Award, not to mention rocking the number seven and having a distinctive patch of honey blonde hair, the honey badger was born. I left out one key part about Matthew's 2011 season. Matthew missed the week eight game against the defending national champions in number 19 Auburn, not due to injury, but because he violated LSU's drug policy. The program had to suspend Matthew, but not for too long, because the following week, the number one LSU Tigers would go into Bryant-Denny Stadium to take on the number two Alabama Crimson Tide. Matthew was just one of many Tigers that faced suspension during the 2011 season, and one of three for their game against Auburn. Quarterback Jordan Jefferson was suspended for the first four games of the season for a second-degree battery charge that later got thrown out. While Tyron Matthew, running back Spencer Ware and defensive back Darrell Simon were each suspended for violating the team's drug policy. But the Honey Badger's drug usage was soon manifesting something bigger than a single game suspension. It's August 10, 2012, and Coach Les Miles held a press conference announcing that LSU's top player would not be returning for the upcoming season, as Tyron Matthew had been dismissed from the program. During the press conference, Miles said, this is a very difficult day for our team. We lose a quality person, teammate, and contributor to the program. However, with that being said, we have a standard that our players are held to, and when that standard is not met, there are consequences. The Honey Badger had been caged. Now with his future in flux, missing what would be his junior season, a decision had to be made. Try to return to LSU and raise his draft stock, or bet on himself and declare for the upcoming draft. 
Tyron bettered himself and went into a drug rehabilitation center and later that fall declared for the 2013 NFL Draft. After participating in the NFL Scouting Combine and LSU's Pro Day, not missing a step as Matthew added 10 pounds of weight, weighing now 185, and posting a 4.5 40-yard dash, now it was up to which team would take a chance on the talented but troubled prospect. A little over 1,500 miles away, the Arizona Cardinals hired Bruce Arians as their 40th head coach. Coming off of a 5-11 season, the Cardinals were looking for a much-needed identity to go along with their new coach. As the 2013 draft kicked off and names began to fly off the board, the Arizona Cardinals decided to use their third round pick on the 5'9 cornerback from New Orleans. Let's hear from Matthew himself on what the draft process was like for him. I mean, to be honest, bro, I, I actually thought um, the Niners were gonna take me um, because I had I had a really good team visit with them and I think they had like an early second round pick that they were gonna try to trade back into the first round and draft me. They actually ended up picking Eric Reed. So once they picked Eric Reed, I was like, oh, I'm definitely not going to the Niners. And then, um, you know, you kind of just sit through the whole second round period and I literally didn't hear anything. Um, and then when we got to the third round, that's when I started, Arizona started to call. And so I kind of had a pretty good idea, like, oh, if anybody's going to pick me, it's probably going to be Arizona. Finally, the Honey Badger had overcome his college hurdles and made it to the NFL. Reunited with his former college teammate and friend in Patrick Peterson, Tyron would become a force on the field at free safety. Despite shedding the Honey Badger nickname, Tyron Matthew played with the same dominant personality and intensity that he was known for in college. After two solid seasons and overcoming injuries and an NFC Championship appearance in 2015, Tyron had been selected to the Pro Bowl and voted 28th in the NFL Top 100 of 2016. At the time, Pro Football Focus's Kevin Zimmerman described Matthew as the NFL's most dangerous slot weapon on defense or offense. He has the ability to match up with smaller, shifty receivers, but also bigger, more powerful tight ends and excel against either. He is the defensive version of the matchup problem players that offenses have been exploiting for years to get favorable matchups in the slot. And he may be the first player to tilt the balance to the other direction. Tyron's hard work had paid off when during training camp, he signed a five-year extension with the Cardinals worth $65 million with 40 million in guarantees according to ESPN's Adam Schefter, making Tyron the highest paid safety in the NFL at the time. But after a shoulder injury, the team in decline, and the coach who drafted him contemplating retirement, Matthew was cut by the Cardinals during the 2018 offseason. Three days after being released by the Arizona Cardinals, Tyron found a new home, this time in Houston, signing a one-year contract with the Texans, closing the gap from Matthew to New Orleans from 1,500 miles to about 350. Now closer to his family who had relocated to the Houston area like many others following the devastation of Hurricane Katrina, Tyron had another chance to prove that he was still on top. In the first quarter of his first game in Houston, Matthew picked off Tom Brady starting off what would be his comeback season, starting all 16 regular season games, totaling 89 tackles, two interceptions, eight passes defended, and a fumble recovery. After the season, Matthew expressed how he desired to stay in Houston, stating, I love the team. I love the locker room. I love the coaching staff. So hopefully the business side of it will take care of itself. But definitely want to be here, he told Texans.com. But Tyron became a free agent once again, leaving the Texans in search of his next stop. Matthew said of his time in Houston. I mean, Houston was good for me, man. Uh, you know, when I went there, obviously I was clo close to home, close as I've been, you know, in a while. Um, and, you know, Bill O'Brien and them, man, like, they just let me be who I was, you know, as a player uh, and as a leader. And I respected that. Um, I mean, I was in a good locker room, too. You know I mean, I had some good dudes around me, J.J. Watt, Whitney Marcellus, like, a bunch of guys that, um, like, just really encouraged me and supported me. But I think Houston was a good pit stop for me because I had a lot of injuries in Arizona. And as, as, as bad as I wanted to stay, I just needed, a, I needed something new. And, uh, you know, I think Houston kind of offered me that. Um, and you playing some big games. And I didn't know the Chiefs was watching the whole time. You know what I mean? So, you know, things work out, you know, even when you're thinking, you know, it's not. Kansas City was watching Tyron, watching him hone his skills as a player, 
and as a leader. Matthew signed a three-year, $42 million deal with the Kansas City Chiefs, adding some force to an already dominant team coming off of an AFC championship loss. Matthew gives some insight on being handed the keys to KC. I mean, it really was everything coming together. You know, I think when I went to Arizona, you know, I, I, it was Patrick Peterson's defense, right? And, and when I went to Houston, it was J.J. Watt's defense. And, you know, when I go to KC, they was like, this is your defense, right? And so um, just taking on that responsibility, man. Um, so Because I knew my whole career, that's really what I wanted. You know, I wanted to be the guy, you know what I mean, on the defense. Cause I knew I was that type of player. And, um, you know, when they, when they gave me the opportunity, man, like, you know, like I said, everybody kind of rally around you and support you. And um, I mean, it, was, it was a good deal. During the 2019 season, Tyron elevated the Kansas City Chiefs along with himself. He helped the Chiefs capture their second Super Bowl title, defeating the San Francisco 49ers, and also was named team MVP on a roster with Patrick Mahomes, Travis Kelsey, Tyreek Hill, and Chris Jones, just to name a few. Posting 75 tackles, four interceptions, 12 passes defended, and two sacks, also finding his way back on the NFL's top 100 players list, being voted number 39. Over time, he started going by the Honey Badger once again, but he adopted a new nickname at Kansas City, the Landlord. During the 2019 season, he played some of the best football of his career. He played like rent was due. Matthew told Yahoo Sports, I feel like the Landlord, he governs the entire field. Like it's not so much about him reacting, it's about him understanding what's really going on. I feel like Landlords understand that and their tenants don't always know how the building is built, but the Landlord does. Matthew's tenure as a landlord continued in 2020, tallying 62 tackles, nine passes defended, one fumble recovery, along with a career-high six interceptions, repeating as AFC champions and nabbing his second Pro Bowl selection since 2015. Matthew and the Chiefs were on the wrong side of history, though, losing to the Tom Brady-led Buccaneers, making them the first team in NFL history to win a Super Bowl in their home stadium. During the game, Tyron and Tom Brady had a heated exchange, which the details still aren't too clear about, but it did deliver a generational meme of the 5'9 Honey Badger pointing in the face of Tom Brady. In the 2021 season, Tyron continued his elevation, snagging his third Pro Bowl selection. But after not making the Super Bowl, the Kansas City Chiefs decided to retool their roster, letting key players walk, including the Honey Badger. Tyron's tenure as a landlord was over with, and he was a free agent once again. Back on the free agent market and not knowing where his next stop would be, Tyron explored his options and returned to New Orleans. While back in Louisiana, Matthew even became an ambassador for LSU, who themselves were going through changes with new head coach Brian Kelly taking over the program. Earlier that year, in January of 2022, the New Orleans Saints were subject to a surprise change with longtime head coach Sean Payton retiring and defensive coordinator Dennis Allen being promoted to head coach, marking a new era for the organization. On top of the regular offseason changes, like losing safety Marcus Williams to free agency and veteran Malcolm Jenkins to retirement, the Saints were in need of a safety and Tyron was in need of a home. In April, Tyron visited the Saints at their facility in Metairie, but left without a deal. A month later, Tyron signed with the Saints in addition to former LSU teammate wide receiver Jarvis Landry. After the signing, the fan base was locked in that Louisiana Sun had finally returned home. In his first season with the team, Honey Badger showed that returning home did not make him lose a step at all. Playing all 17 games and posting a career-high 91 tackles, along with three interceptions, eight passes defended, and one forced fumble, Matthew said, it's most definitely a dream. I think having an opportunity to represent this team, to be a part of this locker room, I've always been a fan of the way the Saints play football. Just to have the opportunity means a lot to me. During the offseason, Tyron prepared for his 11th season in the NFL along with helping out the community that helped raise him with give back events and more. In 2023, he played all 17 games once again and posted 67 tackles, nine passes defended, four interceptions, and one pick six. The Honey Badger's still rolling, baby. In the offseason, Nick Underhill of New Orleans.Football reported that Tyron signed a new deal with the Saints worth $13 million, keeping him in New Orleans and cementing the Honey Badger as a legend. I still love this. I still love the game. You know what I mean? I still love the game. I love the process. And I think that's really why I'm still here. You know what I mean? I could have probably been went home, 
But um, I just love the process. I love working with young dudes. I love seeing young dudes' dreams come true. You know what I mean? Like, you know, it'll mean a lot to me to see Debo and Alante get paid. Like, you know what I mean? Because that's I, I know how much they how much they work towards it. You know what I mean? So uh, just trying to keep those guys focused on on the goals that they had when they was five.